Hey guys, Kefford here, bringing you an advanced car control tutorial. So I got a great response to my last car control tutorial. Now I'm going to go one step further and give you advanced drills that will move you towards amazing car control. In this video, we're going to cover how you should approach your practice, then move into the drills, and then close it out with some sample training plans for y'all to follow. First, we're going to talk about the mentality of improving our aerial car control. At the very base level, Aerial car control is the ability to move the car the way you want to. How do you practice that? Well, it's actually really simple. It all boils down to difficult hand movements, motor tasks, which when you repeat them often enough, they become part of your muscle memory. So if you can't hit arrows like Jazer, all that means is you're lacking the hand coordination. So we're going to do drills that expose you to lots of difficult hand movements, and then load you with tons of repetition in a short amount of time, until each movement becomes muscle memory. Then it'll feel easy and natural to do. One more thing on mentality. You should view improvement in car control based on those two things. How difficult the hand movements you're practicing and how much you're repeating that movement. If you put in the effort and the time, all of a sudden you're in a game and you hit something like this without really thinking about it. Let's begin with drill one, hover and twist without air roll. All you do is jump, try to stay afloat without air rolling. When you're comfortable, start moving the car around in random directions and see if you can learn to recover. If you lose control of the car and experience a blackout moment, one of those moments where you're trying to turn left and you accidentally turn right, lose control of the car, that's great. It's a clue that you need to work on this more. This drill is really powerful. By learning to adjust the car without air rolling, you're preventing yourself from air rolling into an easy upright position, which isn't always possible in a game. Also, when you go for shots that require air rolls, you usually stop air rolling and then adjust before hitting the ball. This will help with that too. Drill two is hover and twist with air roll. Like the previous drill, you wanna go up in the air and do a bunch of twists with and without air roll. Just mix it up and see if you can stay afloat while doing it. This will expose you to those difficult hand movements over and over, and you experience a ton of blackout moments when you start out. That just means you need to repeat, 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 until after a few days or even weeks, it becomes muscle memory. These two drills are great to warm up with. I usually do them for a good 5 to 10 minutes each every day. Drill 3 is ball cam, circling the ball without air roll. So here, you just try to stay afloat and go around the ball. You can start with big circles at high speeds, or go really close and do tiny adjustments at slower speeds. The point of doing this in ball cam is that the camera will mess with your perception of the car's position, so it makes it quite difficult. To increase difficulty, you can fly up and far, approach the ball at speed, and boost to slow down and swing around the ball. You can get creative with this one. Drill 4 is ball cam circling the ball with air roll. Now that we're adding freestyle elements, it'll be even harder to adjust to the camera swinging around. We we'll want to go for the same things as the last drill, where you work towards tight control around the ball while constantly pirouetting and twisting. Drill 5 is goal to goal without air roll. Just like the first drill, we want to get up in the air and do a bunch of non air roll twists while moving from back wall to back wall. One thing you can do for continuous flight is to twist in a way so that the top of your car bounces off the wall so that you can keep flying and get as much practice in as possible. Drill 6 is goal to goal with air roll, which is the same drill as last, except we're going to add both air roll and non air roll twists. Mixing up will really challenge your car control and help you develop quick reflexes for adjustments. Now we'll move on to some more advanced drills. Drill 7 is slalom without air roll. You'll have to imagine the boost pads as cones, and you'll want to just weave in and out of these while staying afloat. Just pick a pattern on the fly and try to execute these at high speeds, only slowing down when you're making hairpin turns. With all these little adjustments, your car will naturally rotate, so you get a lot of exposure to upside down and sideways arrows as well. You can also throw in some non air roll twists to challenge yourself to quickly recover and move in the direction you want. 
Drill 8 is slalom with air roll. Same thing, but now you're gonna freestyle your way through these cones. This is gonna be really difficult at first, and you'll probably crash a lot. So use the pirouette to get some height, complete some twists, wait a moment to familiarize yourself with the new position, then try to keep the car afloat without air roll. You can see here I've gotten quite good at this, but this is the result of doing this sort of drill every day for about three weeks now. Drill 9 is the pirouette recovery, which is one of my favorite drills and is a staple of a Jazer freestyle. What you want to do is aerial towards a wall at speed, then tilt the car back in the opposite direction towards the camera and pirouette to slow down the car. After you've slowed down, stop the pirouette and try to find an upright position to stay afloat. The whole point of this one is that you've little idea of which way the car will face when you finish spinning, so you have to quickly figure out which way is up. In addition, doing it at speed will force you to recover quickly, so you'll probably experience a lot of blackout moments, which you need to quickly recover from. Drill 10 is the Kuxer Challenge, which is a little game that some SART BC vets used to play. Go into exhibition mode and set time for unlimited and default boost, and try to go around the map and stay up as long as possible. It's definitely doable on a standard map as you see here, but you need supreme car control to pull it off. You'll quickly find that this turn is the hardest to do, but if you do it with a wide berth so that you can boost the capsule at speed, you'll have enough boost to get here, and once you're on the straightaway it's a lot easier. If that's too difficult, you can always give it a try on Octagon or Starbase. Drill 11 is the ultimate test. It's only available for PC players through the Steam Workshop, but it's the French Fries Obstacle Course. You want to try and freestyle your way through the map, and I'll teach you how to speed up and slow down while freestyling, and it'll give you lots of exposure to sideways and upside down flying, and it'll teach you how to recover from blackout moments in tight spaces. To be honest, I did this one for about 30 minutes each day and I've seen a lot of results from it. I have done a 100% freestyle run of this map, so if you haven't seen that video and want to check it out, I'll put a link to it at the end of this video. So lots of good information drills here, so you might be wondering, well how much should I be practicing? Now that you have the drills that give you the most improvement for your time, I'll give you a few training plans. At the very least, if you want good results within a month, you need to be doing this at least 30 minutes every day. Muscle memory is a function of your effort and especially the hours you put in. So whatever you do, I think the first two drills are great for warm-ups, those are the hover drills, and it should be a mainstay of your practice, and the other drills can be swapped for whatever might be more difficult. Now, if you're more of an intermediate to advanced player, or you just wanna see more progress in a short amount of time, you can practice 60 to 90 minutes on just car control per day. This is for those serious about improvement and those who want to play at a competitive level. So 60 minutes should be only a portion of a larger overall training plan where you work on other mechanics like dribbling or whatever you need to work on. Again, the hover drills are a great warm up. Then you have some ball cam drills and the pirouette recovery, which I no longer use that much now that they're a little easier. So you can substitute those out for increased times on the slaloms or the obstacle course. The main point here is you want to use drills that challenge you the most and give you lots of blackout moments. You're going to see the fastest improvement by using those drills. So that wraps up this tutorial. These drills are supremely powerful. You just have to put in the time. I saw massive improvement even though I'm a grand champ level player where quick improvement is hard to come by. So you too can achieve these results. I highly recommend putting on a podcast while practicing so that you don't become too bored. There's some great Rock League podcasts and Lawler and Johnny Boys, that's the thing. Lee's podcasts are all dojo. Both of those interview pro level players. Uh, so you can get a lot of insight while you practice. And then there's Knox and Savage's Live from Manfield, which is always a great time. And all links for those are in the description. Now, get in the training modes, focus, and have fun.